Welcome everyone. Welcome to the machine learning sessions. In this session, we are going to cover the clustering topic and we are going to start with hierarchical clustering. Hierarchical clustering. It's a clustering technique which tends to create clusters in a hierarchical tree like structure. Basically, when you run the code and then you visualize the outcome, you get an outcome which is something like a dendrogram. Something like this, which gives you a tree like structure. And that's why the name hierarchical clustering. This technique makes use of distance as a measure of similarity, or you can also say it makes use of distance as a measure of dissimilarity less the distance the two objects are similar more the distance the two objects are dissimilar and the output which is shown is called dendrogram spelling is d-e-n-d-r-o-g-r-a-m let's now see the algorithm of agglomerative hierarchical clustering let us assume you are trying to do clustering of 100 stores. You've got a, your own retail outlets and you have some 100 outlets spread over the city or the state and you are trying to do clustering of these stores. In a hierarchical clustering, the first step is each record each object in this case each store would be considered as a cluster of one which means you have got hundred clusters each cluster has only one store inside it into it now you start doing the distance calculation now how are you going to do distance calculation store will have attributes attribute will be like something total sales number of loyalty customers margin departments and department wise sales revenue and so forth two stores you will say are similar if they have more or less similar sales by department overall similar revenue and more or less competing equal number of customers as loyalty customers logically right so what you now do is you start computing distance and typically for these kind of things you first scale you standardize the variables you normalize the variables so all variables let's assume are normalized or standardized now you compute distance distance would be let's say we are using euclidean distance the data is not ordinal in ordinal case we you can we can use chebyshev but most of the time in these cases what i suggested was we use euclidean distance so you will use euclidean distance between store one and store two the euclidean distance will be applied the formula would be sales of store one minus sales of store two the whole square plus number of customers minus number of customer of uh, uh, store two the whole squared plus apparel department revenue of store one minus apparel department revenue of store two the whole squared plus dot 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 the entire summation will be put in a square root that would be your euclidean distance and again here all these variable will be standardized or normalized we are not going to take the actual numbers we have to standardize it because you have to bring it to a common scale this way you are going to compute the distance between store one and store two then you are going to compute distance between store one store three store one store four store one store hundred store two store three store two store four store two store dot 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 hundred so you are going to compute distance between each and every store with respect to each other you get a matrix the distance which is the minimum those store are very close to each other 
based on business terms i'm not we are not speaking here from geographical location we are speaking in terms of business terms so those stores are very close to each other based on distance they are very similar based upon the revenue and other parameters so these two stores will get merged out of 100 stores only two stores which had the minimum distance from the entire distance matrix that we just created will get merged how many clusters now you are left with 99 you started with 100 after the first iteration you will be left with 99 now 99 clusters are there once again you repeat the same step you compute distance between each other all distances are all available only thing is what you have to do is the two stores which have got merged that you have to compute distance with the remaining stores again you have to see which distance is minimum the two clusters which has got the minimum distance they will get merged so you can see the agglomeration that is happening you started off with 100 stores after iteration one you got 99 clusters after another iteration you are left with 98 clusters after another iteration you will be left with 97 this way you keep going till you reach the top okay a diagrammatic representation is shown here simple there are say these are five objects a b c d e distance computation has happened assume distance between a b has been the minimum those two get merged you get a new cluster now the clusters left are a b c d e once again you compute the distance this time around the distance between de has turned out to be minimum de will get merged so you are now left with a b c d e once again you compute distance between each other whichever comes minimum that gets merged assuming c was closer to de cluster c d e gets merged finally a b and c d e merge you get this this is a dendrogram that you have got the key question in this agglomerative approach is i can understand how to compute distance between a and b there was one entity here there was one entity here each entity has its own attribute i can do x2 minus x1 the whole square y2 minus y1 the whole square z2 minus z1 the whole square however the moment ab has got merged how do i compute distance between a b and c because in a b cluster attribute of a is there x1 y1 z1 attribute of b is there x2 y2 z2 in c the attribute is x3 y3 z3 how do i compute distance between a b which has got two objects and c and this is where you have linkage algorithms coming into play so we need to now understand what are linkage algorithms Let us now try to understand various linkage algorithms. The first and the very basic one is the single linkage or the minimum distance or nearest neighbor rule. In a single linkage, here in the diagrammatic representation, you see there are two clusters shown, cluster one and cluster two. In cluster one, we have got two objects. In cluster two, we have got two objects. So in a single linkage, the way it works is you compute distance between each object of cluster one with each object of cluster two. So in this diagrammatic representation, you will end up with four distances. This is the one. This is the second distance. This would be your third distance and this would be the fourth distance. Of the four, whichever is the minimum distance, you say is the distance between the two clusters that is called single linkage immediately the moment i showed this calculation in your brain there is a thought process which is going on which would say hey it might be impacted by outliers it may be impacted by two objects which just happens to be very close to each other as a result the distance will end up being minimum all those things will happen all those things will happen but this is one of the approach by which you can say this is the distance between the two clusters if you don't like this okay move on let's see the other one which is called complete linkage 
which is called maximum distance or the farthest distance in a complete linkage once again distance between each object of cluster 1 is computed with each object of cluster 2 instead of now seeing the minimum of all the distances you see the maximum once again the same thing is running in to into our mind hey this is again going to be impacted by the outliers okay you do not like that move on see the third one average linkage in this case you compute all the possible distances and take average of that so basically you are neither taking extreme maximum and extreme minimum you are now averaging it out but for this i'll have to do lots of distance calculation for each object of cluster 1 i have to compute the distance with each object of cluster 2 add divided by number of observation but it is more generic it is more uh, it is less impacted by outliers but yeah can i further change it there is a further application there is a further linkage lo logic which you can have which is called a centroid linkage in this for each object present in a given cluster you find a centroid for each object present in another cluster you find the centroid centroid is simply the average of the attributes of the records in the given cluster so you find the centroid for cluster 1 find centroid for cluster 2 compute distance between the centroids that becomes the centroid linkage there is a more complicated approach which is proposed by ward and that is called wards linkage that is called wards linkage in a wards linkage just focus and you will have to slightly get back to your statistics sessions and understand variance concepts i have got three clusters let us call this as a let us call this as b and let us call this as c what is the objective of clustering the objective of clustering is in clustering data is dispersed dispersed means variance heterogeneity and from a dispersed data you are trying to create homogeneous group such that each group has got less variance in it so what ward is suggesting that as, as i am agglomerating in each cluster there is something called within cluster variance within cluster variance or it is simply said within sum of square okay so what will be the wss for this cluster cluster a the wss for cluster a would be x minus x bar the whole square divided by n minus 1 so for the cluster a for all of the objects records which are there you have to compute the center point and then you do x minus x bar the whole square divided by n minus 1 instead of bothering about n n minus 1 if i simply do summation of x minus x bar the whole square this term is called within sum of square in a variance calculation if you just keep the numerator without bothering of dividing it by n or n minus 1 that summation is called within sum of square so this a has got wss let's call it as wss a likewise b and c will have wss at this point the total wss is wss a plus b plus c that will be your total wss what are the possible combination because we are agglomerative in agglomeration you have to either agglomerate cluster a and b or you have to agglomerate cluster a and c or you have to agglomerate cluster b and c these are the possible you have to keep going up till all of these clusters are merged because we are doing agglomerating approach 
if you assume WSS cluster A and cluster B are merged in that case you will get a cluster say AB and C will be left aside the total WSS in that case will be equal to WSS of AB clustered together plus C if you assume cluster A and C are going to merge in that case the total WSS will be WSS of AC plus B if BC is going to merge the total WSS will be WSS BC plus A these are the various possibilities Ward's method suggest the two clusters which result in the minimum increase in total WSS should be considered as the best merge at that level WSS is equivalent to variance and as I keep merging I want to keep merging clusters which leads to minimum increase in variance this is what the Ward's cluster is combine clusters with which the increase in within cluster variance is to the smallest degree in one of my sessions one of the student asked sir can I have a median linkage algorithm logically what he is saying is correct can we have a median linkage algorithm yes immediately I went to R did question mark help on the function and I saw there is a median linkage algorithm also in a median linkage algorithm what you are going to do you will first compute distance between each object of cluster 1 with each object of cluster 2 and then find the median distance and that becomes the median linkage algorithm if you can come up with a different way of calculating distance you can have that as a new linkage algorithm so these are the various kind of linkage algorithms which are used in agglomerative clustering so if you have understood the linkage algorithm and the agglomerative clustering steps this is what is there in a hierarchical clustering having understood the hierarchical clustering will now implement hierarchical clustering in Python we are going to take a simple data set we are going to do hierarchical clustering for retail customers retail customers like you and me who do shopping say at some hypermarket or supermarket let's assume that supermarket has got loyalty card which means if you go to that supermarket for shopping and each time you do transaction you flash your loyalty card so your transactions are tagged to your loyalty number and that data is aggregated at a monthly level to understand how many times you as a customer has visited that store what is the total monthly spend that you are doing how many items from various departments these supermarkets they have their departments they have got apparel department they have got FNV FNV is for fruits and vegetable they have got staple department they have got dairy department they have got meat and fish department so you have got many departments I have taken a very small data set for explaining the concept of clustering in this data set which is shown in a table here we have got some 10 records this output is from Python that's why the index starts from 0 and it goes till 9 so the number of records are 10 as you can see from customer ID 1 to 10 and hypothetically I have named these customers as a B to Z J average monthly spend 
is on average what is the spend done by the customer in the store on a monthly basis how many visits the customer make in a month how many apparel items the customer purchases how many fnv items the customer has purchased and how many of the staple items are purchased this is just a quick understanding of the data the metadata of that is given here we'll now jump to jupyter notebook and we'll run the entire python code in jupyter notebook to understand how hierarchical clustering is done in python i have my jupyter notebook already opened so i switch on the jupyter notebook open hierarchical clustering so here we are setting our libraries os pandas numpy and first step i am changing the directory this is the folder dk2 analytics data file is a folder where my data file customer spend data.csv is present the same you can get this file from the lms portal so let's first execute this code i am executing and to make it bigger screen let me make it full screen yeah so i've executed it's still work in progress yeah then here the title says distance computation we are using skypy spatial distance package from that we are going to import pdist function and square form function so here i run the pdist function and you note from the data frame i am taking the all rows and second to seventh column second to seventh column because in the second column zeroth index here zeroth index is this customer id first index is this name these two cannot be used for clustering so second third fourth fifth sixth seven why because two colon seven seven is excluded two is inclusive so that's how python works so two colon seven and method i'm saying euclidean if i change method equal to chebby chef it will make chebby chef but chebby chef cannot be used here data is not ordinal so here let's say we compute the distance p dist p dist means pairwise distances here you have to compute distance between each object between each pair you have to compute the distance that's why the pairwise distance is what we are computing i run that the code is running square form this function if i do not use what happens is if i simply type this it gives me data in a array format okay internally it is storing the mapping that it is between the first row and the second row first row and the third row but to display in a nice format i use square form so here you see you can see this part is the first zero means distance between the first row and itself will be zero distance between the first record first customer and the second is 3000 distance between the first record first customer and the third customer is 3000.007 and something so it is giving you full distance matrix between the first record with the other then this is between the second record and the others this is between the third record and others so you can see this third record and third is zero fourth record and fourth is zero distance with respect to itself will be zero okay we have got the distance now we are computing hierarchical clustering model we are building hierarchical clustering model for which from skypy cluster hierarchy package i am importing linkage dendrogram and cut tree function so i call the linkage function i pass the matrix i am using method is equal to average 
So this is the linkage method which I am suggesting. It is going to create my cluster. Linkage. Oh, sorry, I did not execute the above line of code. So I execute that, and now I call this function. The code has executed. Matplotlib. I want to plot the dendrogram. Matplotlib inline. If you are using Jupyter Notebook to show the plots, you have to run this line. Dendrogram. These are all the codes to build a dendrogram. Then label, x label, y label, and give some title to this font and other settings. So we just simply executed. Okay, we have got our dendrogram. This is the dendrogram. Let me insert one more row, which is I want to show the data so that we can now relate data with respect to the output. Focus the data has been simply intentionally made in a particular way. If you see a b c d e they have got high spends 10000 7000 7500 6000 f g h i j they have got low spends and if you see the cluster output if i partition the cluster at this level if i put a line here it will be basically saying two cluster this is the first part of the cluster and this is like the second part of the cluster and if I see this cluster in this case you see a B C D E are all in this side they are part of one cluster F G H I J they are on the other side of the cluster what it is trying to tell let me erase those things they are all high spenders have been grouped together all low spenders have been grouped together now within high spenders if you see there are people who have less visits two three and here also in low spenders there are people who have got low visits two three why they should not be combined based on visit within high spenders you see there are customers who have not spent on apparels and here also in low spenders there are people who have not spent on apparels why they should not be combined on apparels the entire calculation has been impacted by spend. See the distance formula. How the distance will be computed between customer A and customer B. The distance would be computed 10,000 minus 7,000 the whole square. That is 3,000 the whole square. Plus 2 minus 3. That is 1. 1 square. 1 square is 1. But 3,000 square is 90 lakh. 1 minus 0 is 1. Again, in front of 3000, the whole square. 1 square is negligible. So if I do the entire calculation and do square root, the entire calculation is being influenced by spend. And this is exactly what I was trying to tell you when I was explaining the algorithm that the variables that we take should be scaled variable. If the variables are not scaled in that case a variable an attribute which has got high value and wide range is going to impact the entire calculation this is problem one what is the other problem the other problem let's now think logically we are using euclidean distance what is the unit of spend rupees rupee minus rupee the whole squared is rupee square what is the unit of visit let's say visit visit minus visit the whole square is visit square euclidean formula is x2 minus x1 the whole square plus y2 minus y1 the whole square rupee minus rupee the whole square is rupee square visit minus visit the whole square is visit square rupee square plus visit square this is no mathematics we know in basic mathematics i cannot add 7 apple plus 4 orange is not equal to 11 apple or no, neither it is 11 oranges that's why standardization of the variable is important in clustering you do standardization or you do normalization 
both standardization and normalization makes the variable unit free what is the unit what is the formula of standardization x minus mu divided by standard deviation unit of x that is the variable itself the unit is rupee say mu mean unit is rupee standard deviation unit is rupee if the variable is having currency rupee rupee minus rupee divided by rupee is equal to no rupee no unit if the unit is a visit x minus mu divided by standard deviation visit minus visit divided by visit the variable becomes unit free so whenever you do standardization or whenever you do normalization the variables becomes unit free and now if we take standardized variable in the calculation because all of these variables are unit free x2 minus x1 the whole square is a unit less number plus y2 minus y1 the whole square is a unit less number plus z2 minus z1 the whole square is a unit less number you can simply add them and mathematics rules are not violated so i reiterate in clustering standardization or normalization of the variables has to be done before you get into the clustering procedure so we rerun the algorithm this is all the commenting which i have just detailed about clustering was done without scaling it can be clearly seen that clustering has happened on the spend variable other variables have no influence on the clustering outcome the variable with wide range and larger values dominate the output we need to do clustering now we are going to do clustering with scaling to scale i am going to import sklearn.pre processing and from that i am going to use a scale function i need not write this i don't know why import scale as scale anyways then i call the scaled function on our second to seventh column i create a data frame let's name it scaled rcdf so it's not going to create a data frame it's going to create a array so let's run that okay we have got a scaled array then we now call the pdist function on the scaled data once again i'm using euclidean and method is equal to uh, linkage is equal to average so let's run it and having done that we now execute the dendrogram this time around if you see the bottom you don't get a b c d e on one side and f g h i j on the other side why because your scale data looks something like this these are like your attributes right the five attributes they have got converted into a standardized number this time around your dendrogram outcome looks like this now how many clusters having created the dendrogram having executed the hierarchical cluster linkage function we have to now see the dendrogram to decide how many clusters i expect to have one approach is to see the cluster diagram and then make a decision the other approach is called wss approach where we create a scree plot after seeing the scree plot we see where there is a elbow formation and that point of elbow formation is the optimal point of optimal number of clusters i am going to discuss the scree plot when we cover k means clustering at the same point i would like to mention many people what they do is in r there is a package called nb cluster that nb cluster package has got some 30 indices so if you run your nb cluster function on the data it will check 30 indices and then tell you of the 30 majority of indices are suggesting what is the optimal number of cluster so you will get a output something like two indices suggest you should have zero clusters three indices suggest there should be one cluster four indices say that you should have two is optimal number of cluster 
15 indices suggest that 3 is the optimal number of clusters. 2 suggest 6 is the optimal. Some such kind of output you are going to see. More the indices suggest what is the optimal, you typically take that number. That function is available in R. Currently, to my knowledge, that function is not available in Python. So many people, many data scientists, what we do, we take the data, put it in R, use NB cluster, quickly determine the optimal number of clusters for our data, take that number, run in Python. Beauty of R and Python is both of them are open source. So which means you do not have to pay money to buy that software. Okay. So for now, we are going to decide optimal number of clusters from the dendrogram. Okay. To decide the optimal number of clusters, if I assume I put a line here, straight line here, I'm using my mouse, so it will not be that straight. How many clusters I will have? I'll have two clusters because this line is cutting at here. So which means anything is which is part of this will be one cluster. And second is this anything which cuts here will be part of one cluster, which means this entire part will be a cluster of this. Okay. So at this level, it is very clear if I make two clusters, then visually this is not gelling with this part. Okay, so okay. So two does not seem to be the right number of clusters. Let us erase these lines. If I say I have, I cut the line here. In that case, this will become one cluster. This will become another cluster. This will become third cluster and this will become fourth cluster. So if I make four clusters, in this case, this A will remain separate. Again, it does not seem good. That I keep one cluster having one only one object. Probably I would like to have A, C, D merging. Okay, so let us delete this. If I create a line exactly here, this will be one cluster. This will be second cluster. This will be third cluster. To me, it seems more logical. So I'll say I want to have three clusters. Okay, so this is how the interpretation you have to decide a cutting line and then from that cutting line you have to see how many down lines from that point how many these lines vertical lines are coming and that many points where vertical lines are cut those are the number of clusters it will form. Now visually we have decided that we require three clusters. So let's go ahead have three clusters, which means I have to cut the data into three clusters. And before I cut that, this one, this axis is the distance. This axis is the distance. The entire matrix, the initial distance matrix is shown here. The entire initial distance matrix, when we first computed the distance on the scale data, that entire distance matrix is shown here. Now, how is this?